Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome to Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. My name is Dr. Boyce Watkins, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Dr. Alicia Watkins. How are you doing today, babe? I'm pretty good. How are you doing? Doing good, doing good. Yeah, today, oof, what a what a topic we have on the roster for today. Did you see the stuff with Kanye and D.L. Hughley? Well, I didn't see it. Well, tell me what's happening with D.L. Hughley. How is he involved? Well, it's getting kind of ugly. You know, DL made some comments about Kanye and his rants. So, of course, Kanye responded to criticism of his rants with more rants. <laughs> and uh, he went on to social media and he kind of said some stuff that, that almost sounded threatening toward DL. You know, okay, I, I think like he, said some, he said something like, I have enough money. I have enough money to get at you. Uh. Or something like that. And um, mm-hmm. it's just, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, he just sounds angry. Yeah. He sounds like he's very upset. But what did Dio Hughley actually say? Well, he did he's a pretty smart guy. Well, he did an interview on Vlad TV, and he basically said that Kanye is harassing Kim Kardashian. That um, He said, that was my daughter, mm-hmm. and you were harassing my daughter. That would be a problem. So how is Kanye West harassing Kim? With incessant numbers of tweets and Instagram posts about his kids and his daughter being on TikTok, Mm -hmm. things like that. Well, it just, it seems like he's just airing his frustration online, Mm, you know, and I don't know if that, you know, qualifies harassment necessarily. Well, let's see. Let's Mm -hmm. see. Well, first off, let me uh, tell, first of all, I want to welcome everybody. And I just want to say hi to Sade and Axel Foley and Hannah and Kathy Tate and Jaleesa and uh, everybody else. And give me a yes in the chat if you can hear us okay. Give us a yes in the chat to make sure we're coming through okay. Because sometimes <laughs> sometimes we've had audio problems. And we didn't know it. We were sitting there talking Somebody, to ourselves. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I've been paranoid about that ever since. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, thank you, Aaron and Nathaniel Lockridge. Okay, I see a lot of yeses in the chat. All right, so let's, ask, let's, ask, let's start with this question. I did a survey. And I asked um, on uh, Dr. Boyce TV, I took a survey and I said, do you feel that Kanye is uh, justified in 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 what in what he's doing online and with his frustrations? Uh, so I'd like to ask you all that question. Uh, mm-hmm. Do you feel that Kanye is right? Like, do you feel that Kanye is justified, or do you think he's over the top? So let me know what you think. Do you think he's? Uh, Tracy says har- sounds like harassment to me. Tamara says be one, be one to you too. <laughs> so what do you think? I mean, do you think Kanye is justified? Give us a yes if you think he's justified. A no if you don't think he is. Nathaniel says no. Uh, Jaleesa says she says yes. Linda says Kim should let him see his kids. Period. Also, why was Kim and her friends made up like the dead? Oh, I think that they there was a picture of like Oh, did you see yeah, did you see that on Instagram? So apparently they were they had makeup on or really dark makeup on and mm-hmm. Kanye West had a problem with that. Oh, well, yeah. you know, he is he's pretty he's like for real for real Christian. Yeah, I mean the well, first of all, you can't control what happens in the other household. <laughs> you know, you can only control what happens in your house. You can't control mm. what happens in someone else's house. Mm, okay. You know, so I mean, if they have if they have shared custody, I remember from talking about shared custody. You know, as long as the little girl is not, or any of the children are not in danger of anything, you can't control what happens all over there when they're with their mom's house. They're at their mom, and um, you you shouldn't want to control what's happening over there, don't you think, boys? Well. It's her business what she does with her children. Interesting. When they're in her custody. Well, let me I just, don't think he has much of a say so as to. Well, let me, know. Well, mm-hmm. let me give everybody the results of the survey. Oh, okay. Um, so I asked, I said, is Kanye justified? 72% of you said yes. And a few hundred people answered the survey in the first mm-hmm. couple of hours. And, and uh, so 72% of the respondents on our platform, which is intelligent black people. So mm-hmm. not many white people on our platform and not many um, stupid, like stupid Negroes tend to walk away. They don't like all that, all that intelligence, I guess, <laughs> makes them mad. <laughs> well, how dare you be question? smart? How dare you be smart? What was your question? How did you name, how did you uh, word your question again? I'm trying to remember. Well, I just said, and I'm sure you can give me um some critique on whether it's a valid scientific no of course i, I don't oh, it's not i don't science. think it's, it's not I it's did. not scientific but <laughs> but i did say i said is kanye west justified 
in his public statements about his children? Yes or no? Okay, because I think like maybe people read it where they're thinking he's justified and just being upset. Just upset about mm. the whole entire situation and angry about the situation. I'm not certain that people really feel as if he needs to just air his frustrations like that online. Like we mm. think that his feelings um, is he. I saw his video and it was almost like he said, "I just got off the phone with Kim, and I'm just upset." And it seemed like he just went into a panic because. Maybe she wasn't listening to him. We don't know what their marriage was like, but, you know, maybe she was dismissing him. Maybe she wasn't taking any of his voice into consideration in the rearing of the children. You know, so maybe they just could not get on the same page. And so what research tells us is that children have better outcomes when parents can actually sit and talk to each other and get along. So maybe she got frustrated. Maybe her um, emotions got heightened and she just got off the phone in a huff. I suggest that they probably need some sort of mediation, don't you think? Uh, uh, yeah. They need a, a, <laughs> neutral, a neutral third party to just come in and decide, listen, if 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 Kim wants to put her children on TikTok, as long as they're not injured or directly hurt by what's happening, he can't control that. Well, aren't you supposed to be a certain age for you on TikTok anyway? Listen, you, you cannot sit and pick and what happens but in isn't other there, But isn't there an age? Like, isn't there an age? Mm -hmm. they, I thought it was. I don't know. Tell me, y'all. It's an is opinion. There, is there an it's, age? It's, it's not, not like No, 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 children. no, no. It's, it's an, I mean, isn't there a legal age or an age, according to TikTok, where they say, like, if your child is not 13... They should not be on TikTok. I mean, I know we all know the kids. We know. Right? We, but we know. The thing we is we know. We got in. kids. But <laughs> but for real, like, I just, I'm just I'm just I'm not I'm just gonna push yeah. that issue just a little bit. It's more Isn't of a parenting there issue. In age. I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it. You know, but that's me in my house. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not as if they're on there harming the children at all. It's the oldest child, right? The oldest. Yeah. Oldest North, girl. North, North or East or. Yeah, I mean, she doesn't seem like she's in danger. There's nothing happening to her. I, I think it's just in a difference of opinion. But well, but okay, so she's know, not on TikTok when she's at your house. Well, you she know she's on... in danger. The poor little girl's a Kardashian. Well, listen. That means you're gonna be a billionaire, but you're gonna be crazy. Well, she'll be she'll be dating some rapper in about eight years. Well, you know, both of her parents, you know, have some issues. Probably need to have <laughs> need to have some issues. But the thing is, is that is he justified in going on Instagram complaining about whether his daughter's on on TikTok or not. I mean, he could, he has a voice. How about when she's at your house, she doesn't go on TikTok. You can't control the rules in another household. Yeah, okay, good point. All right, everybody, you're watching Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. This is where my therapist wife and I get online and try to have intelligent conversations about mm -hmm. things that are happening in the world. Let you guys hear what two college professors say when we're laying against our pillow. <laughs> We also believe in black love, black excellence, black intelligence, all that stuff. If those are the things you believe in, I hope you take a moment, subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you also hit the thumbs up button if you haven't done it yet. Uh, you can go to boysandalishatv.com if you want to uh, subscribe directly. Um, so uh, let's digress for one moment. I just want to um, <laughs> give you props uh, for the fact that you were looking gorgeous in Detroit. And I, I think ah. we should take a moment and say thank you to the people in Detroit who... Boy, why haven't we been to Detroit more often? What's going on? I yeah, know it was so much fun. <laughs> what and, a miss! <laughs> we went to a Pistons game, and that was a lot of fun. And the crowd was awesome; it's totally sold out, like standing room only. And and you just love it when smart black people get together and change the world. And you know? people came out on a Monday morning. Yes, they did. Oh, it was nine a.m. Nine a.m. Monday Crazy. morning, and Crazy. they were there. It was awesome. Yeah, and they were so awesome, and I was so impressed, Dr. Ken Harris, and what they're doing in Detroit. You know, it's just like all of the country. I believe all of the country intelligent black people are starting to speak as loud as the rappers, as loud as the athletes, mm -hmm. as loud as the comedians and, and saying like, we're here too. like, stop acting like all of us want to bust a rap or dribble a basketball. You know, some of us really want to build and create businesses and all. So shout out to Detroit. Shout out to Detroit, Motor City. Yeah, right on. Motown. Right on. Okay, so back back to the back to okay. the lecture at hand. All but, right, so let me let me let me say this. Okay. What do you want to say? I'm about to say something. You ready? You want to hear what I want to say? 
What's up? Lay okay. it on me. Lay All it right. on me. <laughs> All right. So here's the deal. I I have known D.L. Hughley for many years. I met Kanye West one time when he called me on the phone. I will start with D.L. and say this. Uh, D.L. Hughley is a guy. Is it, Would it be rude for me to say that I think he's kind of full of crap? Wait, wait, full of crap? Why? Because D.L. D.L. kind of. I don't know, and I say, and it makes me feel bad because, like, when I I saw him in Houston, Willie D had a thing in Houston, and I was down there, and I saw DL, and we shook hands. But I, I really wish DL wasn't such a pawn for the politicians. He comes off that way. A lot of people feel that way, you know. And so he's gonna have an issue with Kanye just from the jump. Well, because what did he say? I like to know well, what did well, he, he actually he, say. You can go watch the interview on Bland TV. Okay. He basically said that Kanye is engaging in harassment and mm -hmm. that if that is was my daughter, I would, I would come see you. And so, you know, all this huffing and puffing stuff, mm -hmm. you know? And so I think that he just had an issue with Kanye from the jump because Kanye is not a Democrat. Right. Um, so, so that, that right there, I take that with a grain of salt. Now let me jump over to Kanye. I personally, again, my two cents, if if he were you know asking me, hey, what do you think? I would say, you know, man, whatever you do, you got to put the children first, mm -hmm. right? And the question to ask yourself in these situations, if you are trying to be intelligent about this, in my view, is this next thing I'm going to do, this tweet I'm going to put out in front of a hundred million people, mm -hmm. is this going to help or hurt my children? You know, and I just. I think all them kids going to need a lot of therapy. They will. I really do. They'll need a lot of therapy. And I think Kanye West for sure needs some clarity in his choices and the things that he's doing. It's like he just gets so driven and he gets all caught up in the moment and very frustrated. He doesn't have the proper people to vent to. And so he vents to Instagram and, and it's, it's highly inappropriate. So I would agree with that. I think he needs a professional, someone that he can just get all this off his chest and vent to the right in the right way and then respond in a way that's constructive. Well, you know what? Let me just say this. Look, I'll reference Kanye's excellent documentary on Netflix, which everybody should watch. I know you loved it. Genius. I loved it. Yeah. It was really good. And it gave mm -hmm. a lot of insights into Kanye. And um, and shout out to the people who made the documentary. I, I, there was a brother who wrote, I, I saw him at Farrakhan's swan song when we went to oh. see the minister and everything. And uh, he came up to me and he said, I wrote uh, Kanye's documentary. I would say thank you and Dr. Alicia for really? shouting it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, could, I didn't know what was going on. The guys, the fellas were on the other side of the room, so I couldn't mingle with the guys. Yeah, yeah we got to stay focused. <laughs> really? You, yeah, when I'm around you, I just lose. You we just all can't sit me. together. I lose my mind, baby. <laughs> but anyway, so. Um, the documentary was really good. And one of the things I can say, though, is that the documentary, to me, spoke to the power of Kanye's brilliance, um, the power of his uh, ambition, motivation, and self-confidence. But I also it also spoke to um, the problems with it. You know, it, it, the, higher the, you, the higher the peak you climb, the further down you can fall. And, and, uh, and, I, and, and I think that Kanye, it seemed to me, when I saw him, I saw a scene where he was rapping and yeah. he was like 10. His mom was like, go Kanye, go Kanye. That's I just baby. love that. And I think that's great. <laughs> I think that's great. And I think his mother did give him this amazing confidence to believe he can do anything he wants. But the downside of that is that somebody might have convinced him that he can do no wrong. They, that sometimes when a child is told constantly that everything they do is wonderful, brilliant, and amazing, you know, they can forget that sometimes the stuff you could do, you do might hurt people well, it's, or, it's, or maybe it's not appropriate. I, yeah, I would he, wonder he, how Kanye would respond when you say, Hey man, that ain't cool, bro. Like you can't, you shouldn't do that. You're hurting people. Yeah. I think he would respond very appropriately because listen, I think, and I know we've talked about this before that um, the times where he has kind of overstepped his boundaries, he's always gone back and apologized. Not always. I, he, I haven't seen, because I've kind of been following Kanye West pretty closely. <laughs> and I've always seen every time he's had a misstep, 
he will go back and retract and say, I'm really sorry. I was off. I, I was off I the cuff. Think... And so the thing is, is that if he really had, cause I know what you're saying, you're saying it's a really good thing for him to have experienced good parenting, which he did with his mother. That was a de demonstration of good parenting. And what you're saying is that on the flip it was side, encouraging parenting. it's called good parenting to encourage your children. Okay. I mean, encouragement <laughs> so, is good. Encouragement's good, but so, I don't. I don't think you should tell your child yeah, that they can do no wrong. I, I don't. We didn't see. Here's the thing. We didn't see evidence right, based okay, on the documentary point. that she said you could do no wrong. Good we point. saw evidence where everybody's beating him down. He goes and he visits his mother, and his mother pats him up, and that's how. That's good parenting. Okay. So the flip side of it, and what you're saying, is that maybe he didn't get disciplined the way he should have been disciplined. And I don't know that he did not receive discipline. We we clearly, that, that we there was know. a part in there where his father started talking because remember when he ran for president, you didn't, I don't think you saw all of the documentary, but there was a part, I think in the third um, installment of the documentary where he was talking to his father on the phone after he had said a bunch of stuff about being aborted or something about abortion, which I thought was just like, over the top to even announce that publicly. Um, it's a very private matter. But um, but he, he he was on the phone with his father. And while he was on the phone with his father, you know, his father kind of voiced a little bit of a concern. And so I saw somewhat of a discipline and he spoke to his father very nicely. He's like, you know, I see what you mean. I do think that I was off script. I probably needed to practice and be a little more scripted and mindful in my words. So when there have been time, this is how you know that I necessarily wouldn't say that he was a victim of bad parenting because when his behavior was pointed out, even by his own father on the telephone, he was able to say, yeah, you know, I can see what you mean by that. He didn't get defensive. He didn't have a meltdown. You know, he, he didn't do any of those things. He was able to really clearly listen um, to this criticism from his father. So, so I don't know, there just isn't evidence that he could do no wrong. I mean, you're kind of just kind of pulling that out of, of something you're pulling that out of somewhere, but I'm not necessarily. Well, I can tell you what, well, hold on. Well, let, let me say, let me talk mm -hmm. and I'll tell you. What okay. Part. I'm pulling it out from the fact that mm -hmm. I, I do listen to my gut and I, and I, I have seen little black boys raised by their mama uh -huh. to believe that they can do no wrong, that their shit don't stink. And, you know, and unfortunately, you know, I'm not saying Kanye is in this category. I'm not going to say that. I, 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 I asked myself that. I wondered about it yeah. because I don't know if anybody else knows what I'm talking about. Where you've seen a little boy who doesn't have a daddy to check him, mm -hmm. whose mama, maybe she feels guilty. Maybe the mama just is super close with the baby and unfortunately can spoil that child. I've seen that, Okay. you know, and, and so what can occur is. Um, in some cases, not in the case, I'm not going to speak on Kanye's case because I don't know Kanye well enough to describe We this. got pretty but a I lot from wonder, the documentary, but I did ahead. wonder about this, right? I, I know, you know, um, I know in our household, my mother, if it had just been me and my mother, I would have been a very different man from the man I am now. My father is the one who mm -hmm. put boundaries on my behavior that my mother did to some extent, but when I got to be about 17 and I kind of had a deep voice and could do whatever I wanted, uh, I wasn't really responding to my mother like that. My mother was the one who would, you know, cook for me and, you know, tell me everything's going to be okay. She wasn't necessarily the one who could check me as a man. Uh -huh. So, um, so we do know that Kanye's father was in his, involved in his life. And at, so, at, what, at what point? Like, was it like after he was forty years old? Or was no, it, like, I mean, when it, he was like well, that a teenager, that part. Or? You know, I mean, you make a good point because that part we didn't get to see. So there's there's no way to know. All we know is Kanye's best behavior. I mean, when I meet with clients, um, they can't tell me what happened to them when they were really small because they don't remember. But mm. I can, I know. I can have an, I can guess pretty accurately what their life was like growing up just based on their current functioning, mm. you know? So okay. I can, I can pretty much tell not everyone's going to say, well, my mother neglected me and my mama wasn't there for me and my father wasn't there for me. And when I look at what's happening in your life and how you're functioning and how you get along with people and the things that's going on current day, I can almost kind of tell 
I can tell what's what what happened and what conditions were like because you you can't not show it. You can't show your upbringing. <laughs> you can't show how you were raised. So um, again, you know, I'm I am defending Kanye in in some essence because I think that his anger and his frustration is very well justified. I do think that he's gotten into this Christian space or this God space and religion and so forth is very important to him. I'm just very concerned about him having a place to vent other than Instagram. Hmm. You know, he's definitely justified in his feelings. He sounds to be, he, to me, he sounded very anxious, you know, almost like there was just a lot of anxiety, very well concerned about the future of his children and what happens with his children. And I mean, the reality of it is that unless you can prove that they're being physically harmed in some way, it's not your business not your business what happens over there. You can control what's going on with the children when they're in your care. Mm-hmm. So that's, you know. Yeah, which is why I don't like divorce. I think it's, it's kind of, I mean, you know, it's unfortunate yeah. that we just think divorce is kind of normal. But Well, but I, um, the, divorce is, there's nothing, there's nothing inherently wrong with divorce. Just like there's nothing inherently wrong with marriage. Hold mm-hmm. on. There's nothing inherently wrong with marriage. The problem are the people involved in marriage and the people involved in divorce. You know, children can turn out pretty okay if you run your marriage right. People can turn out pretty okay in a divorce if you can have two adults that can put their heads together and can get along with each other so that the children feel okay and feel safe and secure. That's the problem. It's the people involved in these situations that's the issue. Um, I don't agree. Really? Because of a really children can be really messed up if they grow up in a terrible household where things are toxic. And just because there's two parents in the house does not automatically mean that the children who come out of that household turn out OK. It does not automatically mean that the children who um, who have parents who are divorced are going to turn out terrible. It means that optimal the optimal success of children depends on the conditions while they were growing up. Do you have a chaotic house where your parents are going back and forth at each other and you saw very toxic things with your children, with your parents, you know, that had an effect on you and things were chaotic? No, if things were nice and calm and stable and you were disciplined and loved appropriately, you're going to turn out to be okay. Okay, now let me give you my perspective. You're gonna, Go ahead. You're let me give it. Okay. Or you go, you're not going to talk over I don't want to be deterministic you're not, about you're things. Not, you're not, you're not going to start, start over-talking me on that. Okay, all right. You know how so I here, can let be. Me give you, let me give you all my two cents. This is where me and my wife have our, our lovely debates. Uh-huh. Um, I had a father who could be described in some ways as a highly imperfect person. Um, there were times where he was, uh, he could be mean. There was times where he uh, did things that, you know, I probably wouldn't brag about, but he never did anything terribly bad, but he wasn't perfect. You know, he was a Vietnam veteran dealing with PTSD. He overcame a heroin addiction, all that. So he could raise us and he raised me. Uh, and he didn't have to, he, he, I wasn't his biological son. So here's the way my parents did it. And I'm not sitting here trying to tell you like that all, everything you said is wrong. Cause I don't disagree with it. I hear it. I hear it. Um, but the thing that my parents did that I really loved and appreciated, my, mind you, my parents going on year 47. Mm-hmm. Most people can't say that. And they have each other's back religiously. I mean, they all, they just really have each other's back. And I admire that so much. And here's what my parents kind of did in my view. It wasn't that they didn't have tough experiences. It's not that they didn't have uh some toxicity or problems or debate arguments all of that but they always kept it out of the view of the children huh. they so, always so you never might, saw oh, them wait. disagree no i you know what i would see them disagree but it would never go over the top okay. it would never get to the top where somebody's getting punched in the face or whatever but i would see i would see disagreement periodically don't get me wrong it wasn't like how they, was conflict hand, handled well, conflict would be handled behind closed doors. Oh, so there was, you never there saw was, successful conflict no, resolution. No, right. There was con- there was discussions that did not happen in front of the children. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to say that that's the perfect way to handle it. Maybe if they had both had PhDs, they could have, you know. You didn't and, take a PhD right, to or show maybe your they, children. Or master's yeah. degrees, right? They weren't those master's degree PhD type people. They didn't read the psychotherapy books. But what they did understand was something that 
uh, mm-hmm. that sometimes we forget about, which is the power of structure. They We had structure. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to worry about coming home one day and having my mother sit there and explain to my teenage ass why she had to put my father out of the house. Okay. I would have hated. Let me just say this. Let me just say I would have yeah, hated. But you listen, about hold on. Wait, uh-huh. hold on. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. Mm-hmm. Eat no matter what happened. Mm-hmm. If my father had left when I was 13, I would have been angry at my mother. And there's nothing she could say mm-hmm. about empowerment or, or psychological abuse. None of that. I'd be like, mama. Now I'm stressed because daddy's not here and I like having two parents in my house. And I just really don't think that people, I think that I hear the rhetoric about relationships and divorce and everything. And I don't hear a lot of people really talking about the children. Okay. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. You said, because I want to make sure that I hear you. Okay. So you're saying that you would be angry at your mother if your father had left. If your mother had said, I've had enough of this abuse, I want it to be over, or well, whatever you know, it well, is. Well, you know what it would come down to? I'm, it, ju- I'm just making it, sure it, it I would, hear you. It would have come down to mm-hmm. me figuring out, okay, who made this? Who Who's responsible for this shit show? Who put who out the house? Now, my father put my mother out of the house. I'd be mad at my father. Okay. But, but it, you know, given this, usually the father that leaves, you know, because that's the thing. Nobody ever talks about, like, did we survey the children? If you ask most children in a divorced family, if you say, would you rather have your dad in the house? A lot of the kids would probably say yes, but the mothers would say, no, your dad shouldn't be here because he's a cheater or he's a liar or he's emotionally abused, whatever, right? But yeah, nobody, but nobody so I would just, I, I would I just say this though, you that but, but I will say though, I don't, I don't hear a lot of people really talking about the children and that's my two cents. I hear ahead. you. I hear you. So my question to you is, you said you would be upset if your, if your mom had kicked your um, stepfather out of the house. So, um, well, one he's, thing, he's my father, by the way. Your he's father right, right. adopted. Okay. Right. But he, yeah, adopted. Adop- he's adopted. Going. Okay. So, my question to you is Were you angry with your mother because your mother did not stick up for you when your father was mean to you? Um, a little bit. Yeah. You know, so I think what I'm getting at in asking you that question is that the environment of which a child is raised is so important. The environment, making sure that it's a loving environment and that the people who are important to that child is protecting them. So when you get emotionally hurt, and we all know from research and from what we understand, is that being emotionally abused is just as painful as a physical abuse. And being physically abused is very detrimental. So if you in, in cured times where you were just a little child who needed a nice little hug and nice love from somebody mm-hmm. and you weren't able to receive that. You know, right. that's detrimental to the children. I don't care if it's 18 adults in that house <laughs> or one. It's the, it's the type of environment that the child was raised in. I don't disagree. Yeah. I, I just will say, you know, I think a lot of family situations are not black and white. No, um, our, our family wasn't black and white. There were, there mm-hmm. were a couple of days that were really tough, but then there'd be like 100 days that were, they were fine. You mm-hmm. know, so it's it was one of those things where, I really, I think every anniversary, I thank my parents for making that ho- that sacrifice they made to stay mm-hmm. together, even when at a time where everybody would have said, would have justified them leaving each other. My, my father was 23 years old. He had all these women chasing him. He could have sat around, smoked his weed, drank his liquor like he, like they did back then and just said, you know what, why am I going to sh- struggle taking care of somebody else's kid? And uh-huh. being married and being tied down. Instead, he chose family. I honor that. I respect that. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And my mother, yeah, same, thing sure. about, same thing with my mother. My mother probably heard from a lot of feminists who said, girl, I wouldn't put up with that. that well, what man, the, I'm sorry. Didn't put up with what? Like, with just what a, well, I'm sorry. I'm just, well, the thing I'm is, starting to get a picture here. No, no. Well, that the, I didn't, the, the picture is that, I'm my, starting to get the picture a picture. Is that my father is... Um, he was, was he toxic to your mother? He could be, yeah. If he, if, in what know, way? Was it wasn't he like toxic? he was toxic every day. But okay, he was, but in what way? My father was a man who would not fit into our modern society because he had a lot of old school Southern black man values. And people can imagine huh. what that might entail. Was he empathetic? Was he empathetic to the people? Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sometimes. Or was he dismissive? Sometimes. Was he dismissive to you? Sometimes. He dismissed you? Sometimes. How did that feel? How did that feel to be dismissed? You're a child who needs something emotionally or something physically or something, you know, materially. And you have a parent in the household that dismissed you. I mean, yeah, but that's because. What was that like? Alicia, that's because people ain't perfect. 
That's okay, because, so we're that's because no, 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 we're not making excuses. We're saying people are not perfect. We're saying that sometimes we have good days, like our kids. Some days our kids are wonderful and loving. Sometimes they're little assholes. We know this, right? Yeah, but we're so, adults and so, we understand right, that so, that's how children so my, my, are. My, and we try my, to... my opinion on so, so I think we should we could circle back to where we started, right? With, with the Kanye thing. Um, I think that men, I think that sometimes we're a little too quick to act like you're a hero because you got a divorce. I'm not saying to make you a villain. Mm -hmm. I'm saying the question I ask is, um, did you ask everybody in that house what they thought about it? Or did you just ask yourself? Uh huh. You know well, that that would be my two cents. Did the children have, I'm not a, have a say the children, at all? I'm not or, or is it? Or, or are the children dismissed? Look to your children. Right? Are the children dismissed? Right? The same way you 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 would say my, maybe my dad dismissed me as a child. Are mothers sometimes dismissing their children when they say, "I don't care if the child doesn't care. It's unhappy uh -huh. with the dad being gone. I'm gonna be happy here because I can find me a better man." Okay, right. hold on. I want to jump in there because you're you're mistaking having children make decisions in the household. You're mistaking that with dismissing them. Because you don't you don't children do not need to make adult decisions. What children need is children need an, an adult person in there to listen to them, to validate them, to have empathy for them and what they're experiencing, what they're going through. It doesn't mean that children are controlled. Children don't have no vote. In, our, in this house, I mean, other than what pizza we order, you know, children ain't going to be running. Children aren't going to be determining, you know, the direction of our household. But what they are going to do is they're going to be in an environment. And this is what I tell all parents is to make sure that you listen to your children and you validate them and you make them feel like they're important. Because if you dismiss them, it makes them feel like they have a low self-worth. They feel like they're not worthy. And they that's grow true. up as adults feeling they're not worthy of it. Well, that, that's a good point. I do agree with that. Yeah. I, I certainly agree. Right. And I think that to your point, um, you know, the way I, the way I was raised, I know, wasn't perfect because my parents were children. They were in their early 20s. Okay. Like, I remember when my mother was 23 years old and I thought that, that she was an old lady, you know. And so um, the thing is, I can say growing up and I don't know how every kid feels, but I know that. Um, if you ask a child, if you say, hey, we, son, we took your mother away because she was on drugs. I know she took care of you every day. I know that she was a person that you saw every morning. I know she was always with you, but she used drugs. So we're going to help you by taking your mother away. A lot of kids would be like, no, that's my mother. She may not be perfect, but that's my mother. And I think that we don't get that same leeway when it comes to fathers. Like, oh, and that, so that's, you're saying that fathers don't get concerned. They're, they're, that's, okay, that's, so that's right, the that's whole my, Kanye what, West thing. Right, so well, back, well, that, well, that's my whole narrative. My whole narrative would be, you know, I, yeah, I had a father that wasn't perfect, but I'd rather have an imperfect father who's real and who's present than to have the perfect dad who got kicked out of my life or or whatever or or the perfect dad who doesn't exist i don't think fathers should be ever kicked out of the child's life i mean no matter what happened between the parents you know the children need well, to have and you know what else children need i think when you put children the, need, but remember i think when you when the father's not in the house with the child waking him up every morning mm -hmm. he's kind of out well part of that can still can still take place you know i know yeah, a lot of family okay. arrangements where it, it just takes some work you know yeah, but does. um part of that can can really take place um i think I think the point I was trying to make is that, um, you know, just because the parents can't get along, we can have pretty good outcomes. This is what the data and, you know, research is now showing. I'm not saying that th the ideal situation is to have two parents in the house in a loving environment with the children where parents are kind to each other. They're demonstrating to their parents. They're demonstrating to their children the best way to resolve conflict. Um, not to say that everything has to be perfect, but you can always go around and validate what's going on with the children. But so that's that gold standard. So I don't want to say that that gold standard isn't there, you know, isn't you know, the family structure means means nothing, but it doesn't mean everything. And I think that's the problem that we have, mm. that we have. Um, and so I think that for Kanye West, um, he's just starting to, he's starting to lose control over what happens to his children when they're not in his care. And he's mm. really upset about that. He's very much worried about it. I think that he needs counseling ASAP. Hmm. For what well, he's going through. Well, by the way, everybody, you're listening to Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. And this is where we lay against our pillow and we try to have 
smart black conversations about things that are happening in the world. So as you know, we started off talking about Kanye West, but then we jumped into a whole nother universe. So it's okay. Off top. No, I think it's good. I though. never know where right. we go, well, boys. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's the that's the goal. I don't want uh-huh. this to be just about Kanye, right? Because then we're just talking about this guy's life. I'd rather have it be about all of the people mm-hmm. that are listening. So but that, all of us so can that we relate. can all be right. So we can all be better people when we're done, you know, and, and what can we what can we learn from this? You know, I mean, that's our job. We're teachers. And so, by the way, Alicia's website um, is coaching with Dr. Alicia dot com. Uh, she's a licensed therapist and a full professor of social work and also a uh, certified life coach. I forgot about that part. <laughs> and uh, but also a full professor. Not many black women are full professors. I think it's very important to really talk about that. Like That's not just a professor. That's high, high, high level. And uh, I know you'll never say that about yourself. But I'm brag about you. <laughs> and um, and also, if you could hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. And also, you can follow uh, at, uh, Dr. Alicia at Coaching with Dr. Alicia. You can follow me at The Real Boys Watkins. All right. So let me um, let me just say this. You know, I think in summary, I will say this. I kind of worry about Kanye a little bit. I worry, you know, that um, the Internet has become kind of his primary yeah. go to spot to vent his frustration. Um it's very surprising. You know, you would think a billionaire would have a lot of other options outside of he, yeah. Instagram. Um, and I also think that Kim, if I was Kim, I, you know, yeah, I'll be feeling some kind of way because it, it can feel uh. a little bit immature when you're taking it all public like that. Right. When you're letting everybody in on your business. Now, the thing is, though, you know, that Kanye makes a lot of good points that I can identify with as a black father. When he talks about black fathers and he's really talking about parental alienation. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of brothers who are mad as hell because they can't see their kids or mad because they, they, they feel like the rules should be changed. Mm -hmm. You know, like they feel that they, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I ask people this to do this experiment. Imagine if Kanye was a white woman. And he was a white woman on the internet complaining about how his ex was abusive or her ex was abusive to her. Would people listen? How would people see it differently? You know, if she was a woman saying, I, you know, my ex was emotionally abusive and I'm joining the Me Too movement because I want to speak my truth. Would people tell her to shut down like that? Or would they say, you know what? You go, girl. You have a right to speak your truth. Mm-hmm. So if if a white woman could do, I think if, if Kanye was a white woman, I think I think that the world would view it very differently. But the fact that he's talking about black men and being a black father and all that, I, th- I think that people aren't really hearing what he has to say. They're trying to dismiss and write it off. Yeah, he shouldn't be dismissed at all. It doesn't seem, I think that I heard him talk about a school that she wants to send their children to. And he's against sending them to that particular school. And, you know, that is a problem. That's a big problem. And there really should be someone mediating that to try to figure out, okay, hey, where where are we on the same page? Okay, where do we have differences? And how can we pick a school that both of us are um, can agree to um, based on our common ground? Like, what is something? Maybe if, if Kanye West is really interested in having a religious... Um, influence over the schooling and um, perhaps when the children are in his care they he can go and get tutors or whatever to supplement you know the daily schoolings of the children i mean there there's ways around it where it can be a win-win for everybody i mean i can i can think of a, a ton of solutions and so um and so i really hope that they do um put their heads together grow up both of them need to grow up and become adults she there's no reason why he should be that frustrated getting off the phone with with um um with him you know both of them shouldn't be frustrated that means that both of them are not listening to each other and they really need to listen to each other and have empathy for each other hmm. well you know yeah i i think um overall uh, i I'd, I'd be curious to see where this goes you know um i, I think um, I'll be curious to see what the kids think, you know, when they get older and they're looking at the Internet and seeing. Oh, time will tell how yeah. they turn out. You That'll know, and you're just like, years. you're like, what happened in that household? <laughs> yeah. What yeah. Happened? Well, you know, and then here's another little, little real talk uh, perspective I've heard from a lot of people. And I don't disagree is, you know, um, Kanye was complaining and saying that the Kardashians are taking the children away from all of the men that they're marrying. He's, he thought he mentioned Travis Scott. Yeah. Uh, he mentioned, um, 
I forgot the other one though. The, the, the Kardashians, they love to do this interesting thing where they just all, they like to date all these like black men that are rappers and basketball players, right? So it's not like they like black men. They like black men who, who rap, who have clout, right? Who can bring them street cred apparently. Uh, but anyway, um, you know, he was talking about that. And I think a lot of people, I saw a lot of people kind of saying, yeah. like, you know, well, that's what you get. You married a Kardashian. Yeah, you know, you went and you married this lady, you know, who wasn't black. Not to say black women can be perfect, but I wonder how black a lot of black women feel when they see mm -hmm. a man, you know, who doesn't really seem to date a lot of black women, complaining about his relationships. I, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's part of it is that Kanye West just has to come to terms with the person that he married and chose to have four kids with. He's just gonna have to suck some of it up, really. In a way, that's just part of his decision making. So, yeah, he's probably angry with himself. He probably wants his wife back. He's talked about it publicly. I want my wife back. I want my family back. He probably just wants this sense of family and he's not having it. So he's got to get into real into that reality. I want everybody to give me a yes or no. Give me a yes or no. If Donda <laughs> West, if Donda, Kanye's <laughs> mama was here. Oh, Lord. Can we bring her back? She would approve of who Kanye chose to marry. Do you think that she would meet Kim and say, would they get along? Son, that's a great choice. Like, what do you I, think? I think they, Yes or no? You think Donda would, would be cool? You think Donda would, it's kind of rolling? Lord. I don't know. And I hate saying it. I, if, if Kanye hears this, I, I hate to hurt his feelings and I don't mean to do you that. You know what? It, she just seems like such a lady. <laughs> like, really, Donda seems like someone I would meet and just be instant friends with. Seriously. I, I ain't yeah. even gonna lie. Like, that's my kind of, that's my kind of people right there. Donda and her attitude, her personality. She was upbeat. She was positive. I, I love those qualities in a person. Those are the type of people I want to hang around. Well, she was, yeah, she was just like you. I mean, she was a college professor, professor from Chicago and all that. And you you lived in Chicago for a lot of years. Yeah. And, it's just, yeah. I just identify with her. Oh, she's so very, closely. very pro black. Very pro black. Yeah. And um, I don't know if Kanye West would have, she, she probably would have approved and she probably would have had some influence, mm. um, you know, over the grandchildren's lives. She'd love those kids. Once you start having children, all of that stuff. I don't away. think she would have approved. I don't think she approves from the grave. I think that she's looking down like, what is, are you doing? What is this? You really think so? Yeah. Cause I wouldn't approve. I, I wouldn't, if I had a son who said, I'm going to marry a Kardashian, I would go down the list and I'd be like, do you see what's happening to these dudes? That there, something is going wrong. Oh, her sex tape and stuff. That would have been a problem. That too. Okay. Yeah. That too, but, and that was really funny. You saw where Kim, Kim's getting heat. Cause she went and told, she they asked her about advice uh -huh. on running the business. And she said, you need to get off your ass and work. Let me tell you, I hadn't seen that sex tape, but maybe she was working it on that sex tape. <laughs> maybe she right. <laughs> maybe sex tapes she was, are hard work. Maybe, yeah, like you got to get that camera angle right. And you gotta... <laughs> so maybe she was working it. We don't know. Maybe she did so. put in the hard work. <laughs> well, let me, well, let, well, let me just say this, you know, um, in, in all truthfulness, um, I had a chance to talk to Jamarlin Martin, who started Bossip. And Bossip is where Kim Kardashian first got famous. Okay. And I remember Jamarlin mentioning that, you know, back in the day when nobody knew who Kim was, she was very businesslike and very consistent about getting her name out there. What a like, smart lady. <laughs> yeah, she would call them and give them like leads on stories. And, and she didn't care if people said negative things about her. All she cared about was the attention that came with it. And she would say, oh, this <sighs> this celebrity called me a slut. Can Y'all should, should probably cover that. Oh, that is brilliant. Yeah. That's just brilliant. Well, I mean, a billion dollars she's later. she's made it work for her. Well, you know, it's brilliant. Come on. Don't it, hate. Be well, inspired You know what? It. <laughs> it's, it's brilliant, but it's also a little sad. Yeah. In the sense that it's, um, it's brilliant, it's sad, and it's a little racist. Let me explain all three of those. It's brilliant in the obvious sense. Okay, yeah, she worked with, she, with what she had. She turned into a billion. Good for her. It's sad because I, I see a lot of young ladies sort of seeing this and saying, oh, that's how I can become successful too. Not by, you know, becoming a professor like Dr. Alicia, not by, you know, busting my ass in school. But if I get on a sex tape and everybody sees it, then I can be like a Kardashian. Well, you don't have I, to follow identically but, what she did. But, but you, but know you how can the, be inspired. But you know how the world is. Like people don't really be, <laughs> people don't really like to think that much, right? So they tend to just follow other people's blueprints. Now here's the part where it's a little racist. I don't think this would have worked if Kim was black. 
I don't uh-huh. Uh-huh. because when we know why we know we we've seen real. I got real data on this. Montana Fishburn. Anybody know about Montana Fishburn? My Larry Fishburn's daughter. Oh no, daughter. Larry Fishburn's daughter. That poor child. She crashed and burned with her. That poor child. She um, she she, she hung out with the Kardashians and she concluded that if I make a sex tape, I can be famous too. And she didn't become famous. She became a porn star. Yeah, because that path was already woven by someone else. You got to take your own path. Yeah. The best path through the forest. What's that saying? The best path through the forest is the one that's never been taken before. Mm, yeah. You can be inspired by someone's story. I'm inspired by documentaries all the time, but I'm not going to go and be a rapper. <laughs> yeah. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a take those principles and apply it to my magic. You got to find your, you got to find your genius. Kanye West is a genius in his music. You got to find your genius in your area. Mm. Like my genius to me is helping the black community and helping black families stay together and Mm. be healthy. I feel like that's my genius. Stay together. Stay together. Yeah. What's that? Al Green. (laughs) That's my genius. So I put all of the inspiration from Kanye West and Kim Kardashian, even that inspiration, but I translate it into what my genius is. And she Mm. doesn't found her genius. Lawrence Fishburne probably has a genius that she was born in. She needs to step into that. Yeah. Step into her power. Step into your power. Step into that's your the, power. That's the message for today. Step into <laughs> your power. Yeah. Don't and step I do into think, somebody else's power. You know, that's interesting. I don't I think Kanye West is not stepping into his power, what he's doing in Instagram. He's better than just he's better. He's better. He's talented. He is a genius in what he's doing. And it is not coming across with his um tactic of airing it all out on Instagram and Twitter or whatever his social media accounts are saying. That's not making him genius level. Well, you know, I tell you. It's really bringing you know, him down it, and it's quite sad. As much as I I, I, I can say that I, I'm not, I did disagree with some of what D.L. Hughley said about Kanye. He did say something that was accurate. He did say the only difference between him and any other man yelling on the internet is a couple hundred million dollars and about, you know, you know, 20 great songs, right? And I think that, yeah. you know, I think that the music is what saves Kanye. If Kanye wasn't so brilliant at music, he probably wouldn't be able to get away with a lot of stuff he gets away with. You know, like that whole the whole flip to Donald Trump and all that stuff. Like, I think a lot of people were offended well, by that. Yeah. Uh, slavery, what was it? Slavery is a choice. I think a lot of people... Now, yeah. not to say that he didn't have a point. He does have a point on some level. And but... I think and I think, I think, think he's... I think he has a right to be mm-hmm. a Democrat or Republican or whatever. But he, he did clean be. it up, though. He did come back. See, this is where I say he's got some redeeming qualities about him because he did come back and say, yeah, I, 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 know, what, I know why people were concerned about it. Let me tell you what I really meant. And so I think that sometimes... He says things and he doesn't explain it well or he doesn't. Sometimes before you make a point, you got to contextualize what you're saying. It's like, go Mm -hmm. on this journey with me. It's like almost like he just puts stuff out there and says stuff. And he's not like contextualizing it for people. And we're all just like scratching our head like that was really bizarre. You know, we just like, ah, he's got mental health issues. But really, it's not coming from a place where he's just like crazy and out there. It, It makes logical sense when he actually comes back and explains what he means. Yeah, And it's well, just too bad that, you know, it's, something's getting stuck in the translation. But let me tell you, a lot of youth like it. Quincy loved the documentary and his friends came over and I said, what y'all think about the documentary? I mean, a lot of people were inspired by his story. So he's getting a lot right. Well, the documentary is very redeeming. When people put out, mm-hmm. a lot of people are going to Netflix and putting out documentaries about themselves because they want to change their public image. Yeah. Um, you know, like Kevin Hart made a documentary and some other people. Oh, have. great documentary. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. And they and you love them all. <laughs> I do. You know, and, I just and, do because I just love the I, psychology of people and I love like reading and, and listening to people's stories and, and why and how they make the decisions that they make and how they overcome adversity. It is the most inspiring thing ever. Ever. Yeah, and where where we differ a little bit is is, <laughs> is 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 I see the game. I see what's going on. It's basically their PR person said, "Tell your story, and then people will identify with you, and then you can overcome whatever controversy you're wrapped up in." Yeah, right but now. everybody has a right to tell their story. Everybody, they, they do. I, I really do believe. I was listening. I listened to an audio book um, by a, a woman. I can't remember her name, but it was called. Um, our mother's daughters, our mother's daughter. It got it got autobiography or um, memoir of the year, and um, there was an interview with her at the end of the audiobook, and she said, "All of us have a memoir in us. We all have a story that we've lived 
where we can make meaning out of it and we can teach the world something. I agree with that. So it's it's inspiring. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't disagree. I mean, yeah, I mean it's it's a good PR move too. You know, I think Jan, <laughs> Janice documentary. I know you love that. Jan, come right. on, yeah, you, Gary, yeah, so, Indiana. So, she just got me. She so, got me. <laughs> so yeah, when I see your reaction, I I know. Okay, so these documentaries work when people see they your do work. They just love you. Yeah. Well, all right, everybody. Well, uh, we're gonna go ahead and shut it down. But um, uh, if you could do us a favor, please hit the thumbs up button, thumbs up, share, subscribe. Uh, you listen to Pillow Talk with Dr. Boyce and Dr. Alicia Watkins. We do a couple of these uh, per week. And uh, so if you go to um, coachingwithdralicia.com, you can check out uh, some of what Dr. Alicia does. She's a licensed uh, therapist and a full professor of social work. And also, if you go to boyceandaliciatv.com, you can subscribe. So you can follow uh, Dr. Alicia at Coaching with Dr. Alicia, and that's our website as well. So please hit the thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. If you haven't done it yet, make sure you subscribe. We're out of here. Everybody have a good day. God bless you. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care now. Bye, everyone.